Hey there Dev Squad, today we're going to be taking a look at familiarizing yourselves with the Unreal Engine 4 user interface, getting us ready to create our very first video game project. Hey there, my name is Luke and today's episode is all about introducing you to Unreal Engine 4's user interface, getting you creating your very first project, navigating throughout your viewport allowing you to see your 3D world and level, and then most importantly, getting you into the nitty gritty of Unreal, familiarizing yourselves so you're comfortable with following along with the rest of the course and creating your very first video games. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the video. Okay, so now we're inside of the Epic Games Launcher. This is going to be your central hub for accessing Unreal Engine 4. And within this launcher, you're going to be able to do all sorts of things. You're going to be able to learn about the engine. You're going to be able to access the marketplace and access assets made by other developers. And most importantly, you're also going to be able to go in and launch the engine and your project. Now, this video and this course is all about learning Unreal Engine 4. And the best way to do that is to simply open open it up and start experimenting with it. So if we go over to the library tab at the top here, we are going to be able to see the engine versions that we've currently installed and then launch one. Now you can see here, there is lots of different engine versions available. And if you want to change that, you can do so very easily. So let's say you want to use the latest version, which for me is 4.23. I can simply go ahead and launch it. But if you've got a team and they're using an older version of Unreal, we can just add a new version of that engine. And we can just add a older version of that engine to our launcher here. To do that, all we've got to do is go to engine versions, press the plus icon, choose one from the drop down, and then just press install. But for now, we are after 4.25. In addition to this, I'd also like to take a moment to say that if you're using a newer version of Unreal Engine, such as Unreal Engine 4.26, you are going to be able to follow this along as the interface is going to stay the same. Now, before we launch this up, I also want to say you have all of your projects displayed here. And if you have a project that you're working on, instead of having to choose the engine and then load up the project, you can just click the project to take you straight into that project project and it's as simple as that. So you can see here I've got Embervane which is a game that I'm working on with my team. Instead of opening up Unreal Engine 4.21 and then choosing this project I can just double click this to take me straight into the action. But for now let's go ahead and create our very first project inside of Unreal Engine by launching 4.25. We're going to give this a couple of seconds to load up and then from here, what we can do is create our first project. Now, at the moment, we've got a couple of different project categories available to us. Games, film, architecture, and even automotive. Now, we're just interested in games, so we're going to press games. We're going to hit next. And then from here, we can choose a template that is going to save us a little bit of time. So let's say you're working on a first person shooter game and you don't want to have to write all of the code for the camera, the weapons, shooting. You can just pick up one of these templates, which is going to give you all of that base code to allow you to form your game. Now, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to be choosing third person, which is going to give us a character and a camera, and it is going to allow us to move around. So having said that, we're not having to write all of that code for handling the character movement, the camera movement, and all of that good stuff. And it gives us a nice, clean place to work from. Now, if you want to check out any of the other templates, by all means, go ahead and select one. But for the purpose of this course, we're going to be using the third person templates. Now from in here, you have to define your project settings. Myself, I'm going to be using Blueprints, which is Unreal Engine's visual scripting language. But if you're a C++ developer, by all means, go ahead and check C++. You've also got some quality settings down here. You can choose maximum quality or scalable. You've also got ray tracing, desktop or console, and mobile and tablet. And you've also got starter content. Now with the desktop and console one, if you're working on a game for a mobile, make sure you choose the mobile option, or if you're working on desktop and console, well, just choose that option. But for now, we're gonna be working with desktop, and we're also going to be choosing some starter content to give us some materials and textures to play around with. With that done, you can then choose your location for the project, and then set the project name, and I'm gonna set this to Dev Squad Learning. And then once we've done that, 
go ahead and hit create project and this is going to load you up into Unreal Engine for the very first time. With this done, we are now inside of the Unreal Engine editor and we have got loads to show you in this video, but I'm going to try and keep it nice and quick for you. So the first thing that you're going to be taking a look at is your viewport, which is the center of the screen and is also your way of seeing your game level and your game play. So you can fly around the levels within here, but at the same time you can also play your levels and your game as well. We're going to be touching on this in just a moment. So moving away from the viewport, we've also got a bunch of other panels. The next one is our world outliner in the top right hand corner, which is going to outline all of the different objects within your level. And then with that, we can then select one and we can see it in the viewport. Or alternatively, we can go down to the details panel just below that and start changing some of the settings. For example, I've currently got a wall selected so I can change things like the location and the scale. So those panels are pretty straightforward. Next up, you have got your content browser. So your content browser is going to be your access to all of the different assets and objects within your project. Now, this asset browser is just like any file browser. You are going to have a hierarchy view, which can be accessed by pressing the sources panel button on the left hand side here and then browsing through all the folders. And then from there, you can then go into the individual view over here, select an asset and then just drag it into your scene. The content browser is as simple as that. We are, however, going to be talking through all of the different asset types you've got available to you as we go through this course. Next up, we have got our work panel and our work panel is currently set to our placing mode. And within this place mode panel that we've got here, we can place in loads of different objects into our level. It's really straightforward, but this is how we're going to be bringing generic objects into our scene. For example, if I want lights, I can click, drag and drop one into the scene from there. If I want geometry, I can take a cube and I can drag it into the scene just like that. It's really simple, but we're going to be touching a little bit more on this panel as we go throughout this course. Now, in addition to that, like I said, there is loads of different modes available to us and we can see these by pressing the modes button. And then from here, within our editor modes, we can change to the landscape mode, the foliage mode, the brush editing mode, and also the mesh painting mode. But for now, we're gonna set it to the select mode, which allows us to place actors within our scene. Moving on from there, we've also got our toolbar at the very top here with our quick and frequent functions within Unreal, such as save, our modes, accessing our content browser, accessing the marketplace for getting ready-made assets, the project or the settings, the blueprints, cinematics, build, play and launch. Now, we're only going to be touching up on just a couple of these as we go into this. So starting off with things, you have got your play settings. So if you press play, this is going to take us into our viewport and allow us to play the game. From there, we then get a pause option, a stop option and a eject option. If we press pause, it's going to pause your game. If you press resume, it resumes it. You can eject to leave the camera and fly around your level. And you can also press stop to stop. But also within play, we can play the game in a mobile preview, a new editor window, a standalone game and you can also simulate it which is where you're going to be running all of the code but again you're just not in the camera and you're not controlling so you can see everything going live while still floating around your level over with your launch settings you are able to launch this over to different platforms so if you have a mobile device connected and this is a mobile project you are going to be able to see your mobile on here and you're going to be able to launch the project which is perfect so that's the launch and that's play you've also got some build settings which we're going to be touching up on later on but that is your toolbar so that should give you a very quick overview into all of the different panels that we've got that makes up this main interface and now what we're going to do is dive into how you can navigate your viewport and your level so we can quickly dive into the game and we can move on to the next video where we're going to start manipulating our content.
So within our viewport here, we can move around this really simply. So if we hold down right click, we can go into our viewport and then we can move our mouse to pan the camera up, down, left and right and it's really simple. While holding down right click, we can also use the W, A, S and D keys to move the camera in addition to panning the camera with our right mouse button. We can also use the arrow keys to move forwards, backwards, left and right, which is perfect. So moving within this viewport could not be easier. Now, when you're moving around this, if it is too fast, you can change the speed of this viewport really simply. All you gotta do is go up to the top right hand corner, change your camera speed either up or down. If you've got a large level, you're gonna want to turn this up. If you've got a smaller level like this, maybe you might want to turn this down. For me, I found with a scene this big, a camera speed of about three works for me. So let's take a look at a couple of shortcuts within our viewport now that make things a little bit easier. So the first thing I'm gonna do is select this cube that is within our starter level here. Now, let's say instead of having to fly over to it and looking at it manually, and say I didn't want to do all of that, you know, palaver, then you can press F and that's going to focus in on your object. If you then hold down Alt and then hold down right click, it is going to zoom you in and out of that object. If you hold down Alt and left click, it is going to pan you around that object. So just using these controls, it is going to allow you to manipulate the viewport a little bit better, get from one place to another a little bit easier. Now, in terms of focusing, you can also focus directly from the world outliner. So let's say we've got our skylight in the top right hand corner and we can see it. We can just select it in the world outliner in the top right, double click this and it's going to focus us in. And as we select that, you can see in the details panel on the right hand side, it is then going to show us all of the different settings for that skylight. So let's say we wanted to go over to our main light source in our world outliner. We can then just change the settings. Just like I said, we can change the intensity up and down and make this brighter and darker. But we're gonna be taking a look at all of these different object types and their associated settings as we go through this course. Now, there's only a couple of other options that I wanna show you for the viewport, which are quite simple. So the first thing that we wanna do is take a look at some of the different viewing modes. We've got different modes which can be accessed in the top left of the viewport, such as our lit mode, which we're seeing at the minute. We've got our unlit mode, which is gonna remove all of the lighting and really help on the performance. We've got our wireframe mode, our detail lighting mode, and a whole bunch more. But these main three are the ones you're going to be using most often. To the left of this, what we've also got is our perspective mode, which we're currently in, or our perspective view that we're in. But we've also got our orthographic views, such as our top, our bottom, our left, and our right. And we can combine these different views with our modes to get different results. So don't worry about this too much right now. We're gonna be playing into this as we do go through this course. But more than anything, I just wanted to let you guys know that those options are there. In addition to this, you can also have multiple viewports within the Unreal Engine interface. So if we go ahead and minimize or restore the viewport by pressing this button in the top right hand corner here, we can have access to four viewports here. So by default, you're gonna have four, four viewports. You're gonna have your back view, your right view, your top view, and then also your perspective view. But for the majority of the time, you are just going to have your perspective view and you're going to have this maximized just like this. Anyway, that is absolutely everything that I wanted to introduce you to for the viewport. Now, moving over to the content browser, which we touched up on earlier on, I've got a couple of things that I wanted to show you in terms of interface. So if we go ahead and find one of our assets, such as a material, we can then double click on this material and it is going to find or open rather a interface specific to that object type. And these are going to come up as new windows. And every type of object has its own interface. So if we change from the material folder on the left hand side here to my particles folder, I can open up the fire 
and you're going to see this is a different interface. So with this, you can see that they can be moved around just like that. They can also be tabbed into the main user interface just like that too. Now, in this video, I'm not going to be talking about all of the different interfaces we've got available to you as we are going to be creating all of these different assets as we go throughout this course. That's pretty much it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed it and have got a good foundation working towards using Unreal Engine 4's user interface. Don't forget to check out our Patreon community to support this channel and make more videos like this possible. But for now guys, as always, stay awesome, keep creating, Virtus, signing out.